do the names of Satan mean anything? And I get it. It's a weird topic to hear about the devil for 25 minutes, right? Some people would be like, uh, you know, if I would have known this is what you're talking about, maybe I wouldn't have kept, <laughs> right? Some people would be like, you know, I really want to hear that sermon. That's what I'm going to come for. And I would say that uh, <coughs> both fall into a little, a little bit of a trap. But today we're going we're gonna to go ahead and talk about two points and three names. There are 22 names for the devil in the Bible, but we're going to hit three today. And then there's two points of just clarification. So this way you guys know what to expect. You know, I'm not going to, there's five points today, but I'm going to go quick. Just so you know. So our first point, let's just go ahead and get into it. We should not be overly interested in or ignorant of Satan. Now, it is a life in general is a balancing act. You have to spend so much time at work. You have to spend so much time with your family. You have to spend so much time uh, doing the things that you enjoy. Dealing with Satan is also a balancing act. Now, we don't totally just ignore that there is a spiritual battle going on. But to be so overly involved in what is spiritual that we start getting a bit strange in our everyday life it turns people off. And it's, it's creepy to think about that there is an invisible world like Billy was saying, wind. We don't see the wind, but it's fine. We understand the wind. But the Holy Spirit, angels, demons, Satan, roaming the earth. You know, we worry about, oh, there's a bear in Southern Illinois. <laughs> One bear in all of Southern Illinois. And we're getting news updates. It's in St. Clair County right now. It's in, you know... <laughs> It, it was spotted in vain, but <clears throat> to know that there is a spiritual war going on. We watch the movies about war, you know, Saving Private Ryan. They're storming the beach of Normandy, and bombs are going off, and bullets are flying. And that's going on right now. I don't know what weapons they use, but... There is much more going on than we realize. But there's a book called The Screwtape Letters. C.S. Lewis, the author of The Chronicles of Narnia, uh, he was actually a, a very large, uh, influential person in Christianity. And he wrote a lot of books, but, but one book in particular called The Screwtape Letters is a, a fictional tale about two demons communicating to each other. And in his preface for the book, he says this <clears throat> quote, There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race, humans, can fall about the devils. And he just means, gen generally speaking, demons. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They, speaking of the devils, are equally pleased by both errors. Because if you disbelieve entirely. They can do whatever they want. You're not going to believe that it's them. So they can distract you, they can they can tempt you, and you're never even going to blame them. You know, it's like the, the golden child who's actually poking the problem child all the time in the backseat. It's not my fault! He's poking me! Quit hitting your brother. You know? But it's actually the one who's poking that's doing the problem. But then the opposite. Now, we are so distracted by the spiritual side of things that we miss out on human connections. That, that, you know, well, they always like to talk about that spiritual stuff, and I'm not into that. But that's, that, that's a turnoff to some people. And then also, uh, well, the, 
don't never do it. Never taking personal responsibility for our actions. And so before I want to get into anything, I just want to say that this will be a, hopefully a, a topic that we get to talk about very seldom at length, but that you keep in mind that there is a spiritual battle going on. So our first name, Satan. That's from the Hebrew, Satan. And it means accuser or adversary. You guys, the last two weeks, have gotten Hebrew 101, have you not? <laughs> Elohim, Ewey, Yahweh, Satan, you know, Adonai. Just go ahead and sign up for a college course after this. <laughs> You're prepared. So Satan it comes from the verb that means to accuse. And that is a like a, a legal verb. Like you are being accused of something in court. And that is Satan's primary function. As, as his title represents, he is in heaven whenever he is in heaven, accusing us before God of our wrongdoings. So we've got two verses on the screen. Uh, one is, is Job 1-7, the other one is Zechariah 3. If you would, if you have your Bibles, turn to Zechariah 3. We're going we're gonna to get back into that later. Zechariah is a small book, and I would say hit Matthew at the New Testament, and then go backwards a little bit. You'll hit Malachi, and I think Zechariah is right next to it. So Job 1.7 says, the Lord, and we know because Lord is all capitalized, that's God's own name right there, that they substituted Adonai. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on earth and from walking up and down on it. So whenever there is the new heaven and the new earth and we're all there and we're partying up there with Jesus, evil will not come in. But until that day, Satan is allowed to come into heaven and talk to God. And that is what he is doing. There's, there's demons all over, but Satan is not like God. He can't be everywhere at one time. He doesn't fill the world with his presence. He, he goes here, he goes there, his forces go other places, and then he goes back up to heaven, and he says, God, those children of yours, they're misbehaving. And I'm not doing anything, you know, it's not me, it's them, they're doing it. You know, have you ever uh, had somebody just come and tell you how bad of a parent you were? This is that person. God doesn't like Satan, but he is a, he's like the prosecutor in a case. He is there to say, they deserve to die. They deserve to go to hell just like me. They're no better than me. They are rebelling against you. And we see this in Zechariah 3. So if you have your Bibles open, first verse. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, and that's the Joshua that led them into Jericho. Not, not me. <laughs> the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And if, if we're going to talk about names, let's talk about the angel of the Lord real quick. The angel of the Lord is Jesus. The specific angel of Yahweh. The, the messenger. That's what angel means. We'll talk about angels next week, so hopefully I'm not spoiling too much. But the messenger of Yahweh. The, the mouthpiece of Yahweh. Jesus. So on one side of God, there is Jesus. <clears throat> standing at the right hand, okay, before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. So you've got Jesus on one side, and you've got Satan on the other. Like, I mean, picture perfect of a court case. You have the judge. And then you have the defense and the prosecution. And that is the interaction that's going on in the heavenly courts. 
Satan is roaming around, waiting to devour us. And he goes to heaven with that information. He says, God, they're failing all over the place. Wars. Hungry people that people refuse to feed. And they just, little stuff. People are always lying to each other down there. They can't even help them. And then, we get revelation. And that is when Satan gets cast down. And we get a great description of Satan. I would say probably like we get so many of the 22 names in the next two verses that I'm going to show to you. So let's go ahead and go to it. And the great dragon, that's Satan, was thrown down, that ancient serpent, talking about Genesis 3 right there, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. Spelled out what, what Satan does. He accuses day and night. But we also see that he is the deceiver of the whole world. And that's our next name, <clears throat> devil. Devil is the, the Greek translation of Satan, and it is Diablos. And it literally means a slanderer, a deceiver, a liar, a cheat. Paul, <clears throat> whenever he talks about the people in the church and, and don't associate with you know, these all the sexually immoral, the drunkards, the slanderers. He uses the word diablos. And when Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, it's the word diablos. That means get behind me, person who speaks falsely about what God is doing. The devil only speaks in lies. The Bible says that's his native tongue, is lying. And what he does is he oversells the benefits of sin. You know, when you're tempted, doesn't it feel like this is the only thing I want? This is, this is it. This is like, right now I can't even fight the urge because it is, it's what will fulfill me. Or it will I have to lie, because if I lie, then, or if I tell the truth, then I'll be caught. My only option is to sin. And then you, you do it, whatever it is. And afterwards, what's he do? He lies to you again. You are so guilty. Yes, we are guilty, but he lays on the shame. Why do you even go to church? You just, all you do is mess up. God can't love you. He's not for you. You're not for him. Why would he be for you? God can't love a sinner like you. You say that you're a Christian, and yet, look at what you watch. Look at what you do on Saturday night. Look at what, look at the way that you treat people. Am I making this up? Am I the only person who feels this way? <laughs> Man. He <clears throat> wants to tear you down. And that is the way he wins. He can win if he successfully deceives you about the truth of God. <clears throat> the truth that there is no sin that is too far for God to forgive you. And he wins if he can successfully accuse you of the unforgiven sin before God. God. Jesus can't really say much about this guy because 
He doesn't even know him as Lord. And if we don't know Christ as our Lord and Savior, he's right. His, his case is pretty easy. You know, that's, all right, well, I don't see his name here. Case closed. But that is not my desire for any of you. And like I said earlier, I doubt demons are using guns. You know, walking around with AK-47s. Their main tools of deception are mental and moral attacks. To get you to believe that your life would be better in a way that God doesn't condone. And that's how we get to third. I don't know if this is a name. It's an adjective that describes a name. It says in Genesis 3 that the serpent it was more crafty than any other beast. So I went ahead and put it as a name because it makes sense. I don't have a Hebrew word for this, <laughs> but the, the Hebrew word for it means cunning or subtle, smooth. All of these in a negative way, you know? Well, he's crafty, isn't he? He's a sneak. The devil won't try to get you to kill somebody if they are your best friend. He's better than that. It's not going to be like, Josh, I know you've been married to Mariah for almost two years now, and you love her immensely, but tonight, she's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird thought. I'm definitely not doing that. <laughs> uh, great job, Satan. He starts building a case. You know, we don't like lawyers, do we? I love lawyers. This is going on Facebook. <laughs> but as a whole, stereotypically, oh man, they just, you know, Satan is slowly building up a case. Well, he doesn't treat me well. She doesn't treat me well. Maybe she doesn't love me at all. Maybe I'd be better off if I wasn't with her. Maybe I should kill her. No. That's very cool. But we're talking about years and years and years of little sin that turns into a mountain, and you don't even realize that the, the ground you are standing on has been shifted slowly over time. That you are, you've been thrust up on this, this plateau of lies that the crafty, the cunning, the subtle serpent has been laying. They say bamboo, get this, bamboo, now all the sustainable bamboo, it grows. 90 feet in five weeks. But prior to that five weeks, it's establishing a root system. And it has to grow its roots for five years. Just a little seed. And you never see anything happening for five years. And then, <laughs> let's see, this is 16 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Somebody do the math. Four, five times higher. Five, five and a half times taller than this building in five weeks. But she never saw anything for five years. And we see people on the news and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that he was being like that. I, that, that, you know, I watched him whenever I was a kid and he was on drugs. He was being inappropriate to women. Or, you know, we hear about pastors. Oh my gosh, I would never expect for that pastor to be caught up in something like that. And we think that these are just moments that happen. But it is the visible action 
of a root system that has been growing for years. And in ice. Let's say this room is 25 degrees, right? Mariah would not be able to be in here. <laughs> Everybody would be bundled up, 25 degrees. And you're like, Josh, come on. We got this ice in here. It won't melt, let's just turn it up to 26. Fine, 27. You guys drive a hard bargain. I'll turn it up to 27. And you complain some more, and I turn it up to 28, turn it up to 29, 20, 30 degrees. Guys, we're getting close. 31 degrees. All right, 31 degrees, that's it. But I'm stopping here. Ice is still good at 31 degrees. And one of you sneaks behind my back, it turns it up to 32. And then ice starts melting. Just one degree. 31 degrees, we're fine. But because of the pattern of behavior that had been existing, we just go one degree more. And suddenly our ice sculpting business is all melted in our hands. But Satan is crafty. He, de he deceives us into thinking, one degree, one little root, one little thought. Don't worry about where your money's going. You've got money in the bank. I'll spend an extra dollar here. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. You know what, you're getting gas. Hop in there, get you a Red Bull. <laughs> Three bucks, who cares? Until you develop a lifestyle that just splurges all the time. Whether that's financially or morally or relationally. And these things build up. And then suddenly we're characterized by being broke all the time and, and, and angry at the drop of a hat and liars. And it's, where, I didn't used to be this way. But that five years, that 10 years, those, those thoughts have been growing in our minds. And then they exist in our life and they've taken over before we know it. There is hope. Our last point. Satan asks for God's permission. I don't have time to go through the whole book of Job, so I won't. But every time Satan asks Job, or asks God, well, Job's faithful for now, but what if I took all of his family away from him? Okay. Take his family. Job was still faithful. What if I take all of his possessions? He didn't go in that order. <laughs> I think it was, he, he took away his possessions. He took away his family. He took away his physical health. And Job was persistent in following Christ, in, in loving God. But every time, Satan asks for God's permission. And he makes that promise for each of us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. If you don't know this verse, memorize it. No temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. Anything, any temptation you experience, you're not alone. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. First of all, Satan is the tempter. And he has to go to God. And God says, I know them well enough that they can endure this. They have the ability. You've never been tempted beyond what you can bear it. And God also says, not only I give you permission, but I'm also providing a way out. And sometimes that way out is a simple, why am I thinking this? I know they love me. 
Yeah, the, not Mariah. Yeah, the people that I work with mess up, but I'm patient. I'm a patient person. Sometimes it's, get out of the situation. You have the ability to leave. Sometimes we just need to leave our phone instead of taking it with us, you know? Get, get some bad news and you wanna say something? I'm just gonna set this over here and I'm gonna go over there. Cool down a little bit. I don't know, I, can, I wish I could go through every single specific temptation and help work a way out, but that is maturity, is seeing I'm being tempted and knowing this is a temptation, this is Satan, the slanderer, the deceiver, the liar. You're being crafty, but my God is stronger. You went to God and asked for permission. And I know that God has the faithfulness in me and the faithfulness in himself that he will not let me be tempted beyond what I can bear. God is good. God is so good. So I said, turn in your Bibles to Zechariah 3. We're going to use that right now. 2 through 4. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua is standing before the angel, clothed with filthy garments. And the angel, that's the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity, your sins away, away from you, and I will clothe you in pure vestments. He says, I'll put a clean turban on your head. And later he says, bring your friends. This is not just for Jerusalem. This is for anyone who loves Jesus. I am glad that I have a good lawyer in heaven. This lawyer is not just pleading my case. He has stepped in and said, I'll take the punishment. He's got me on good retainer. No. I didn't pay a thing. He paid it all for me. And he paid it all for each one of us. And that is why we live our lives for him. Hold his statutes. Follow his steps. God gives you the strength. God gives you the ability. And he holds back the enemy. So I've talked enough. You all look very awake. Very talkative. Why don't we go 